Hey, welcome to a new video. Trees are indispensable for our planet. They provide us with oxygen, offer resources like wood and paper, and serve as a home for countless animals. But not all trees are as friendly as they seem. Some are even dangerous to both humans and animals. In this video, we'll show you the 20 most dangerous trees that you should never touch. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 20. The bunya tree hails from a fascinating lineage of flora that thrived during the Jurassic period. However, many of its botanical relatives have become extinct. Nonetheless, the surviving members of this family are scattered across the remnants of Gondwana, adorning lands in South America, New Zealand, Malaysia, and more. Today, these majestic trees are found in sparse areas of Southeast and North Queensland, with the Bunya Mountains serving as a testament to their continued presence. Arising from the remnants of a shield volcano that emerged approximately 30 million years ago, these mountains boast peaks reaching over 3,600 feet. Within this rugged landscape, Bunya pines thrive with impressive heights, ranging from 65 to 164 feet. Their foliage adorned with stiff needle-like leaves can lead to infamous painful cuts. Another peril lies in the tree's formidable cones, each weighing up to 22 pounds, and are capable of dropping from heights of up to 164 feet without warning. During their seasonal abundance from December to March, these massive cones turn into projectiles, instilling fears they unexpectedly descend onto unsuspecting individuals and properties. Number 19. The vast majority of plants rely on birds and insects for the dispersal of their seeds. To attract these pollinators, plants emit aromatic compounds or produce sweet nectar. The Pisonia tree follows this pattern, attracting small birds to its branches to build nests. Unfortunately, the sticky seeds of the Pisonia adhere to the feathers of these birds as they brush against the seed-laden branches. Instead of contributing to pollination, this process often leads to the demise of countless birds, as they become weighed down by an excessive number of seeds, rendering them unable to fly. Consequently, they either perish from starvation on the ground or fall prey to predators. Pisonia trees, commonly known as bird catchers, are primarily found in tropical environments, particularly on islands in the Caribbean and the Indo-Pacific regions. Their elongated seeds, covered with a thick slime layer and tiny barbs, easily attach to any passing object. These seeds form clusters, with each bundle containing anywhere from a dozen to over 200 seeds. Remarkably, the flowering cycles of the Pisonia tree coincide with peak periods of seabird activity. Sometimes, the unfortunate birds meet their end inside the tree itself, with their remains adorning branches like eerie Christmas decorations. Number 18. Historically, reports of poisoning associated with Robinia trees have mainly involved horses, which suffered severe illnesses or death after consuming parts of this tree. Additionally, there have been isolated cases of young children falling ill after chewing on or ingesting bark or seeds. The toxic compounds Robin and Fascine are found in the leaves, bark, and seeds of these trees. They disrupt protein synthesis and can cause cell death. As a result, all parts of the tree contain toxins, known to cause symptoms ranging from gastrointestinal disorders to neurological conditions. The trees can reach a height of up to 82 feet and a diameter of up to 4 feet. The bark of the mature tree is thick and deeply furrowed, while the twigs are typically smooth or finely hairy, sometimes adorned with pairs of sharp thorns at each leaf. Number 17. The Taxus buccata harbors the toxic alkaloid Taxin B which directly interferes with calcium and sodium channels of cardiac myocytes, leading to cardiotoxic elevation in cytoplasmic calcium levels. This makes the yew tree, along with its common garden variety, the Japanese yew, one of the most poisonous woody trees in the world. Nearly all parts of the tree, except for the fleshy red part of the berry, contain lethal doses of taxine. The toxicity of yew documented for millennia poses significant risks, as taxine is a profoundly toxic lethal dose estimated to be about 3 mg per 2 pounds. The toxicity of yew, documented for millennia, poses significant risks, as taxine has profoundly toxic effects on humans. Death due to poisoning has been recorded throughout history, with a lethal dose estimated to be about 3 mg per 2 pounds of body weight. Ingesting even a small amount of yew needles can have severe consequences. And the seeds of the yew tree contain even higher concentration of poison, with just a few seeds capable of causing death. Additionally, chewing or breaking open the seeds releases a more potent dose of the poison, increasing the risk. Number 16. The sandbox tree is remarkable not only for its appearance, but also for the hazard it presents. This tree is renowned for its explosive fruits that burst open with a loud bang, ejecting seeds with great force, potentially dangerous to unsuspecting people nearby. The entire tree, including its milky white sap and seeds, is toxic and can cause severe skin irritations or even be dangerous if ingested. 
Furthermore, the thorn-covered trunk of the sandbox tree makes it an intimidating sight. Despite these hazardous characteristics, the tree plays a crucial ecological role in its habitat through its unique method of seed dispersal, contributing to the biodiversity of the ecosystem. These aspects make the sandbox tree a fascinating subject of the study and the complexity of nature. Number 15. The Tambati tree, characterized by its decided nature and moderate height, has rough black bark. Its milky latex secretion can cause severe skin and eye irritation, rendering it unsuitable for use as cooking fuel due to its tendency to impart unpleasant flavors to food. Early adventurers learned to steer clear of the Tambati wood fumes, which tainted food grilled over campfires. The name Tambati loosely translates to spiral arranged African tree a nod to the spiral arrangement of its flowers. Although the milky latex is toxic to humans, it poses no harm to animals. The tree is a favorite food source for many species, including antelopes, elephants, and monkeys, with black rhinos showing a particular preference for tambodi. The fruit of the tambodi resembles a three-lobed capsule that bursts open with a sharp popping sound in summer. Some seeds exhibit a jumping movement on the ground, earning the tree the nickname Jumping Bean Tree, due to the larvae of a small gray moth wriggling inside the seeds. Indigenous healers use tambodi sap to alleviate toothaches, while burning the wood produces highly toxic smoke that can cause severe stomach ailments. The fragrant wood also acts effectively as an insect repellent. Moreover, the local tribes have long used the milky latex of the tree to poison fish for an easier catch. Number 14. The Namibian bottle tree is a small bottle-shaped tree native to South Angola and Namibia, bearing creamy white flowers on a prickly branch. Over time, the specimen in the garden greenhouse will develop a swollen trunk, lending credibility to its common name. The milky sap of its leaves and stems is highly toxic, and Namibian hunters traditionally use this sap to poison their arrowheads. Contact with the sap can also lead to blindness if it enters the eye. The distinctive swollen trunk is the hallmark of the bottle tree and serves as a reservoir for water storage, allowing it to thrive in hot and arid climates. There are two subspecies. One found in northwestern Namibia, southwestern Angola, and northwestern Botswana, while the other occurs in regions of South Africa. The Namibian bottle tree can grow up to 26 feet tall, with velvety leaves. In addition to the toxic sap used by traditional hunters as arrow poison, the wood of the bottle tree has been used for drinking bowls, inadvertently poisoning unsuspecting birds. Number 13. Indigenous to African savannas and often seen in Serengeti, the whistling thorn trees reach a height of about 18 feet, and it's adorned with swollen thorns. These formidable thorns serve as a defense mechanism against herbivores, such as giraffes and elephants. However, if these tempting treats prove irresistible to hungry animals, the whistling thorn tree harbors inside its round hollow pods thousands of ants. Inside the swollen thorn pods are four ant species. When a branch is disturbed, these ants emerge from the holes and swarm into the mouths and noses of unsuspecting nibblers. The thorn tree fortifies itself with pairs of long thorns, up to about three inches long. These long, sharp thorns can pose a risk to both animals and humans who venture too close. Nestled among the long thorns over the tree are specialized stipular thorns, attached to bulbous swellings about one inch in diameter. This defense system is crucial, because this tree does not contain toxic substances to deter predators. Number 12. Animals often consume wild cherry leaves directly from the tree, from cut or broken branches, unaware of this danger lurking. These leaves are inherently toxic in all these scenarios. Wild cherries contain certain substances that combine and create hydrogen cyanide, or cyanide, especially when the cherry leaves are bruised. This rapid conversion to cyanide can be observed by crushing several leaves and detecting the strong smell of cyanide emitted. When ingested, affected animals exhibit restlessness, rapid and labored breathing, and attempting to breathe through their mouths. Muscle weakness, tremors, staggering, convulsions, and eventually coma usually manifest within 10 to 20 minutes. As poisoning progresses, respiratory functions deteriorate, leading to internal suffocation affecting all body systems. In acute cases, the blood may appear dark red, with possible congestion and bleeding in the liver, lungs, trachea, and other mucous membranes. Additionally, the rumen may swell with gas, and a smell of bitter almonds may emanate from the carcass. In cases of low dose or delayed death, inflammation of the stomach and small intestine may occur. Number 11. In the Pakistani village of Sindh, remnants of massive floods from 2010 persisted in the form of trees, shrouded in eerie cocoons. These ghostly cocoons, spun by millions of spiders and possibly other insects, adorn the edges of submerged agricultural fields, marking a unique phenomenon stemming from desperation. When more than a fifth of the country succumbed to floodwaters, millions of spiders sought refuge in these trees, seeking shelter from the rising tides. The unintended consequences of the devastating floods created a remarkable sight, with spiders weaving intricate webs between the branches as they adapt to their new tree habitat. 
This migration of small insects upward not only transformed the landscape with an intricate and beautiful pattern, but it also had a significant impact on the local ecosystem. As the spiders ascend, they play a crucial role in controlling the mosquito population. For example, village residents face the threat of malaria, a disease transmitted by these pesky insects. Number 10. The Manchineal tree, native to coastal areas in South Florida, as well as the northern parts of Central and South America and the Caribbean, is an extremely dangerous tree. Often marketed with warning signs and a striking red band surrounding its trunk, the tree serves as a sharp warning sign for passerbys. Named for its resemblance to apple trees, this tree is anything but innocent, and has earned the nickname Little Apple of Death. Despite its attractive appearance with fragrant, sweet apple-like fruits and a height of up to 49 feet, every part of the Manchineal is toxic. Spanish conquistadors, shipwreck survivors, and even modern tourists are said to have fallen victim to this poisonous allure. Historical accounts tell tales of blindness and painful inflammations caused by contact with the tree's sap or ingestion of its fruit. Even standing beneath the tree during rainfall carries risks, as dripping water can transfer toxins to unsuspecting people below. Additionally, burning the bark of this tree causes air poisoning that can lead to severe irritation and blindness. Number 9. In recent decades, the Bradford pear trees have become a common sight in suburbs across the United States. However, many caution against their use due to environmental concerns. Originally introduced by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as an ornamental tree in the garden in the mid-1960s, Bradford pear trees gained popularity due to their affordability, ease of transport, and rapid growth. Despite their initial allure, they pose significant hazards. Reaching heights of up to 30 feet, Bradford pear trees are notorious for their weak branch structure which often leads to breakage within just 20 years. As these trees age, their steep V-shaped structure becomes increasingly burdened, posing risks to anything underneath. Despite periods of strong winds, snow, or ice, they are prone to splitting, posing a danger to nearby objects and structures. Additionally, they are known to emit an unpleasant odor. Number 8. Certain trees like the dragon's blood tree and blood wood trees are called bleeding trees due to the presence of red sap or fluid in their trunks. The dragon's blood tree, also known as the Sokocha dragon tree, is a prominent example found in the dragon's blood forest of Yemen. Renowned for its legendary red resin, the tree is believed to possess medicinal properties and serves as an anti-diarrheal, anti-ulcer, antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant. Historical records even suggest that the resin was used as a dye. With an umbrella-shaped form, the dragon's blood tree efficiently absorbs moisture from monsoon rains and sea mists, channeling it into its roots for nourishment. Similarly, wild bloodwood trees exude a dark red liquid when cut, attributed to the presence of tannins in their sap. Remarkably, the red sap of bloodwood trees designed to clot and seal wounds, mimicking the behavior of human blood. Alternatively, bleeding resin from stone fruit trees indicates a condition known as gumosis usually caused by bacterial or perennial cankers. This resin flow is triggered by injuries, such as winter damage, environmental disturbance, disease, tool wounds, or insect infestations. While these trees themselves are not directly hazardous, improper use of their products can pose potential dangers. Number 7. The abundant milky sap of the milky mongrobe possesses a significant danger and can cause intense pain and blistering upon contact with the skin. Additionally, if the sap comes into contact with the eyes, it can lead to severe pain and temporary blindness. The tree is also known as the blind your eye mongrove, and it typically reaches heights of up to 33 to 98 feet. Its roots extend along the surface of the ground, often forming knotty structures. The leaves are thick, oval, and pointed, ranging from 2 to 4 inches in length alternately arranged in a spiral pattern. Young leaves are initially pink and then turn yellow before turning red and falling, especially during dry periods. Like other mangrove species, the wood of milky mangrove is valued for its use as firewood. Additionally, the sap is often used as fish poison, while even dry leaves retain their toxic properties, making them effective for quickly killing fish or of use in poison arrows. Number 6. The primary natural source of the strychnine tree comes from the plant Strychnos nox vomica, native to South Asia and Australia. Nowadays, this tree is mainly used as a pesticide, especially for rat control. Strychnine is a white, odorless, and bitter crystalline powder that can be ingested, inhaled, or administered inadvertently. Due to its potent toxicity, even small amounts of this can cause severe effects, possibly leading to death. Exposure to this can occur in various routes, such as drinking contaminated water or absorption through nasal, ocular, or oral mucous membranes. Inhalation of airborne strychnine powder can also lead to poisoning. Following ingestion, symptoms of strychnine poisoning typically manifest in 15 to 60 minutes. Individuals exposed to low or moderate doses may experience restlessness, anxiety, agitation, painful muscle spasms, including fever, and possibly kidney and liver damage. Consciousness of symptom early on is common. Number 5. 
The typical shipworm burrows deep into the wood of trees washed into the ocean, feeding on and digesting the wood with the help of bacteria. However, unlike its shipworm counterparts, the Kufus lives in the mud. It also relies on bacteria for nutrition, albeit in a different manner. The Kufus inhabits an environment characterized by organically rich mud, emitting hydrogen sulfide, a gas derived from sulfur, known for its distinctive rotten egg odor. While this environment may repel humans, it serves as a veritable feast for giant shipworm. At its peak, two fleshy siphons emit water over massive gills, while the base features a slimy, eyeless head resembling a mixture of moist lips and deceased innards. These organisms, with their 1-5 to five feet long, tusk-like shells, were first recorded in the 18th century. Number 4 the Devil's Tree is an oak with several decaying branches, located in an undeveloped field along Mountain Road in Martinsville area of Brown's Township, New Jersey, United States. Local folklore surrounds this tree, suggesting that it bears a curse. Individuals who harm the tree or show disrespect towards it are purportedly to encounter misfortune, often in the form of, for example, car accidents. There are also numerous legends surrounding the tree, with one common tale suggesting that Bernard's township was a central hub for the Ku Klux Klan. Others say that a farmer, after committing a family tragedy, hanged himself from this tree. Additionally, legends claim that those who came too close to the tree are haunted by a black Ford pickup truck that disappears at a specific point, or that individuals who touch the tree mysteriously get black hands when trying to eat at a restaurant. Reportedly in winter, the ground beneath the tree remains snow-free, regardless of recent snowfall. A nearby rock called Heat Rock, along with the tree itself, purportedly radiate warmth regardless of the season or time of day, leading to claims that this is a gateway to hell. Number 3 How many ways can a coconut harm you? More than you might think. Death by coconuts can also result by hyperkalemia, caused by consuming moderate to large amounts of coconut water, due to its high potassium content. Additionally, you can simply walk past the tree and have a coconut fall on top of you. In 2017, a tragic incident occurred in Mumbai, India, where a 58-year-old woman lost her life when a coconut palm broke from its trunk and fell on her while she was taking a morning walk. Despite being rushed to the hospital, the woman succumbed to her injuries. So make sure you're being safe when you're around a coconut tree. Number 2 The honey locust, also known as the thorny honey tree, can be a dangerous tree. It's native to Central North America and primarily thrives in the moist soil of river valleys. Despite its origin, the honey locust demonstrates remarkable adaptability to various environments, leading to its widespread introduction worldwide. However, outside its natural habitat, it can pose a threat as an aggressive and invasive species. Contrary to its name, the honey locust does not serve a significant source of honey production. Instead, its name derives from the sweet taste of pod pulp, historically used as food in traditional medicine by indigenous American communities. A notable feature of the honey locust is the production of numerous thorns, especially by the female trees on their trunks and branches. These thorns, which can be exceptionally long, have the potential to pierce through footwear and cause painful wounds upon contact. Although not classified as toxic trees, injury can be caused by these thorns, often leading to slowly healing ulcerous wounds, comparable to the injection of a hardening poison. Number 1 The lethal substance used in lethal injections in the United States originates from the Cerbera odala, a tree native to the marshy areas of India and South Asia. Known as the pong pong tree, it can grow up to 33 feet tall and bears fruits resembling small green mangoes that encase oval seeds. The seeds of this tree contain various glycosides. This earned the tree the ominous nickname Suicide Tree. In a 10-year-old study conducted in the state of Kerala, India, the tree, the tree was implicated in 537 poisonings. Despite the bitter taste of the seeds, they can be ingested after being ground and mixed with spicy food, masking their flavor. They contain a potent cardiac toxin, known as cerberine, which bears a structural similarity to digoxin in foxglove plants. Digoxin works by blocking calcium ion channels in the heart muscles, leading to disruptions in the heart rhythm and ultimately proving fatal. Have you ever encountered a dangerous tree? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.